Item number 10B, receive a report regarding settlement agreement between the City of San Bruno and PG&E and adopt a resolution amending the City's investment policy relating to settlement of funds. Um, Mr. Mayor, if I might, um, I'm going to tag team with our City Treasurer tonight on this report, so I will, I will start. Please. If it's the Council's pleasure. Um, and I want to give the City Council and members of the public a little bit of an overview of the settlement agreement itself and some of the significant elements related in particular to the settlement funds that uh, will be received, that are expected to be received from PG&E as a result of our recent settlement agreement. Um, before I uh, go into more specific comments about that, I wanted to just give uh, a very short uh, update and background um, on some of the financial issues as well as uh, activity related to the, the community's uh, rebuild of the damaged uh, neighborhood. And I do that deliberately because, as you know, over the past year and a half, the city has been focused uh, directly and uh, it's in, you know, it sometimes it feels like almost exclusively on the rebuild of the Crestmore Glenview neighborhood uh, that was so tragically and dramatically damaged by the explosion and fire. Um, we are very pleased to be able to report that within the last two weeks, first couple of families have actually moved back in to new homes where their previous homes were destroyed. So they, they, people are beginning finally to move back into their neighborhood. Of the 38 homes that were destroyed today, about a third have pulled building permits and are working on their homes. About a third are preparing to rebuild, are at some stage of the planning and, de and design development process. And there are still a third of the families uh, who were displaced from the neighborhood by destruction of their homes that uh, we uh, have not heard any solid uh, plans from. Some of those have sold their properties to PG&E and others may be planning to do so. The city, for its part, has begun rebuilding the public infrastructure. We will be replacing water and sewer lines, and repaving the streets, among other infrastructure, throughout the neighborhood. And we will be rebuilding the park, again, among a variety of different projects to uh, restore and improve the neighborhood. Funding for all of this work and for all of the other activities that the city has undertaken in response and to support the rebuilding and the recovery of the neighborhood as well as the city's ongoing involvement in investigations, regulatory, and legislative proceedings, comes from a trust fund that was established by PG&E approximately a year ago. That trust fund is only available to cover the city's actual costs associated with the activities that I just mentioned and others, including staff time to address the direct uh, effects and activities associated with arising from and related to the uh, incident of September 2010. It was the city's intent in entering into negotiations with PG&E to recognize and to address the damage that has actually been experienced by the San Bruno community as a whole. That damage extends far beyond the city's actual cost as I just mentioned, those costs, again, being covered by the trust fund that was previously established. The damage that the settlement agreement intends to address includes things such as our residents' fear, their loss of the feeling of safety and security in their own homes and neighborhoods, again, throughout our community, and the change that we've experienced uh, over the past 18 months of this community's identity uh, as it's portrayed in the media and uh, on a broad-based basis, uh, that identity and reputation uh, now being associated with a place where bad things happen. Um, clearly, that's not something that uh, uh, we believe is the rightful place of the San Bruno community in in its identity and in its reputation, and it is uh, a component of the damage that has been experienced by the San Bruno community as a whole. The settlement agreement specifies the use, the receipt of $70 million 
in settlement funds and the specific dedication of those funds for the benefit of the San Bruno community. Those funds that were negotiated in the settlement include the $1.25 million value of five vacant properties in the Crestmore neighborhood that have been to date acquired by PG&E and therefore the actual amount of settlement funds in dollars that will be paid by PG&E is actually $68,750,000. The city as part of the, develop, as part of the settlement agreement is, is required to establish a not-for-profit public benefit entity to invest, to manage, and to determine the use of the settlement funds. This, in my view, is one of the most important parts of this settlement agreement and uh, the presentation tonight. The negotiations specifically addressed that the settlement funds will not go into the city's general fund. That was an important uh, piece of the discussions and is a uh, deliberate intent of the settlement agreement. The establishment of the not-for-profit entity is clearly then a critical component of the preparation necessary to meet the intent and the requirements of the settlement agreement. The city plans to move forward soon to begin the work effort to establish that non-profit entity and it's our intent to make sure that this is done in a thorough and thoughtful manner so that we make sure that we are covering all of the necessary issues that will, we hope, secure the long-term viability and operations of the entity for the benefit of the entire San Bruno community. In order to make sure that we do this right and that we cover all of the necessary issues, our work to date on a very preliminary basis indicates that this process will take as much or estimated to take approximately nine to 12 months. Again, this is a very detailed and uh, thoughtful evaluation and there are many alternatives that will need to be, many issues and many alternatives that will need to be vetted in, sh in order to assure that we get it right and that we have the proper structure to move forward with this uh, very significant responsibility. It's for this estimated period of time that the city will have temporary custody of the settlement funds. The city treasurer in a moment will address the city's process to hold the funds for this temporary period. And again, my comments are intended to supplement his and to emphasize that there is a necessary and detailed process required to set up the not-for-profit entity that will then be responsible for the consideration of ideas and the decision-making about the future use of the funds. This will take time and no decisions about the funds will be made before this work to establish the not-for-profit entity and to give it an opportunity to determine, uh, to get up and running and to determine how it's going to operate. No decisions will be made before this work is completed and the not-for-profit is up and running. Again, the intent is for the benefit of the entire San Bruno community and there will be an opportunity for the public uh, and other interested parties to contribute their ideas. But again, I'd like to caution that this will, uh, this is still a ways off in time and that it will be the city's responsibility as a temporary custodian of the funds and of this process to make sure that it is done in a thorough and thoughtful manner. City Treasurer is here tonight uh, to address the related action item that we're proposing tonight and that is the very small amendment to our investment policy that allows him uh, to take custody of the funds and to uh, deal with their safety and security for the temporary period of time that they remain in the city's hands. John. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Mayor and City Council, <clears throat> the city's investment policy has been amended uh, to establish a separate policy for handling of, of the aforementioned funds. Since the special purpose entity has yet to be created, the investment policy for these funds shall be to invest in securities for which the full faith and credit of the U.S. government is pledged for repayment of principal and interest. 
This will ensure that the total amount of the settlement will be secured until the establishment uh, of the, uh, the nonprofit. Uh, included in the packet, of course, is the uh, city's investment policy. Uh, the shaded areas on page one and six represent the, the, uh, the modifications. Uh, I can just read them uh, briefly. The monies entrusted to the city treasurer can constitute the investment pool or the portfolio, portfolio referred to in this document. However, the monies to be received by the city in connection with the settlement agreement with PG&E shall not be part of this investment pool or portfolio, and instead shall be invested separately as set forth herein. If you can move to page 6, under the heading of Investments and Strategies, with respect to those monies received by the city pursuant to the settlement agreement with PG&E, 100% shall be invested in the instruments described in the subsection A, which specifically is securities backed by the faith, full faith and credit of the U.S. government. Until such time the um, uh, nonprofit is established, the city will act as temporary custodian. Again, once it's established, these assets will be transferred to the nonprofit. Any questions of our treasurer? Action. Just a, a question for the city manager. When you say nine to twelve months, is that nine to twelve months to form the nonprofit uh, entity, or nine to twelve months to determine uh, to include forming the nonprofit entity, and also to determine what to do with the with the funds? At the current time, my best estimate, based on the um, little uh, that I've been able to uh, understand so far, is that we can uh, use an estimate of 9 to 12 months for the establishment of the not-for-profit entity. Once the entity is established and up and running, then it can take on at its pace and uh, with its uh, procedures in place to determine the uh, use and future of the funds. So yeah. it would be after the establishment of the not-for-profit entity. Now, is there is it nine to twelve months of work to do something like that, or is there just some waiting time, application time, and uh, uh, it, 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 and that that's a that's an excellent question. Um, it's both. So there is a significant component of the work that um, will occur at the front end of that to determine how should it be structured, uh, what is the governance structure, what is the operational structure. A um, number of, of different issues will need to be vetted as it relates to this particular entity and for this particular purpose. The, the law um, for, for establishing a not-for-profit entity um, is, is relatively straightforward and probably there would be lots of people that will say, oh my goodness, you could do that much sooner. Um, and if this were a straightforward process, if we had a roadmap and we understood exactly um, the details of how this, this particular entity should be structured, it would probably take, based on the advice I've received so far, approximately six months. Um, and that then would include the various uh, uh, legal uh, d document development and uh, filings and waiting periods and that type of thing. Any other questions or action? Okay. Again, your action tonight is strictly on the investment right. policy as the Treasurer's outlined. It's pretty straightforward that the yeah. City Treasurer gave us all. Go ahead and uh, adopt, we adopt uh, introduce and the resolution for adoption, please. Councilmember Medina. Aye. Councilmember Salazar. Aye. Vice Mayor Ibera. Aye. Mayor Ruane. Aye. Madam Mayor. Can I can I make it a, a, a comment? And, and I want to thank the city manager for going again through this detail of distinguishing between a trust trust fund and the uh, the settlement of the 70 million. Uh, however, I'm sure there's still going to be plenty of questions. As to and, and we've heard some of the questions from the victims, from the residents in that area, as to you know what you know what the money should go to. And I I just think that there should still be uh, some information going out 
in layman's terms to assure them that there is, in, in our opinion or, or in our belief, enough money in the trust to take care of the neighborhood. And, yeah. That's, that's yeah. an excellent suggestion. Yeah. Um, I know there's still, after that, you know, there's still going to be questions as to, well, the residents of Crestmore Glenview neighborhood are part of the community as a whole and have been affected even more so than many, many, many members of the community as a whole. And so, you know, how, you know, how are we going to address them as far as the settlement? So I know that's going to be a difficult, you know, that's going to be a challenge as we move forward. But I think there's still a, it's my, in my inclination that there's still a confusion between the, the trust, the 50 million and the 70 million. So let me um, make just a couple more comments to hopefully clarify that situation. Uh, first, the uh, trust fund uh, was slightly modified through the settlement negotiations and the agreement that resulted um, as follows. The uh, ultimate uh, maximum amount that, that will be contemplated for contribution by PG&E to that trust uh, was originally $70 million, coincidentally. Um, and that amount was reduced to $50 million as part of the settlement agreement. Um, to date, $12 million of that $50 million maximum have been deposited into the trust account, which is administered by an independent third-party trustee. And those funds are, are being used to reimburse the city for its costs associated with a wide variety of activities. That include the direct services to the Crestmore neighborhood residents who were damaged, services provided by the city, that is. And um, it will be used as we move forward into the uh, active rebuilding of the infrastructure. There, again, there are many different types of activities, and um, among the things that are included for reimbursement are things like staff time associated with the many, many, many different activities that we've undertaken uh, in response and in uh, the recovery effort uh, to the devastating uh, uh, events of uh, September 9th. Now, all of that said, um, none of those funds are directly intended to be distributed, shall we say, to residents of the of the Glenview neighborhood, and they are not uh, the Crestmore neighborhood, and they are not um, um, intended in any way to uh, uh, provide restitution to those individuals who who many of whom lost so much. Um, that restitution or damages um, is the subject of separate legal proceedings that the city is not involved with and has no part in and has actually very little information about. Um, and that is the legal proceedings, the uh, claims and lawsuits that have been filed by um, actually a fairly large number of individuals and families um, and the, the, it, it, against PG&E and that is being handled, as I said, through the legal process. Um, city has no involvement and the $50 million in the trust fund is intended for the purpose of allowing the city to do its work associated with restoration of the neighborhood. And I'd like to mention one more thing because you, uh, when you asked the question, you, you uh, made me think about something I forgot to say earlier. There's been a little bit of confusion as well, uh, certainly on that topic. I hope I've clarified it. There's been a little bit of confusion in the wake of the um, uh, settlement agreement completion on another topic that I think is important, and that is that, um, that I've received a, a couple of questions about, well, um, did the city waive or somehow release its um, interest or its right, if you will, to participate in um, advocacy for safety improvements, to participate in CPUC proceedings, or other legislative uh, proceedings relevant to um, the incident and to its aftermath, and more particularly to improvement of this uh, area, not this state and this nation's utility infrastructure for the benefit and the safety of um, uh, residents just like ours, everywhere, including ours. 
Um, and the answer to that question is no, absolutely not. I don't believe that it would have been the interest or the direction of the city council to make such of a decision, and it certainly is not part of the settlement agreement. So the city is continuing to participate in CPUC proceedings to maintain an active interest and awareness of activities associated <coughs> with improvement of the safety related to uh, utility infrastructure, and we will continue to do so. No, no rights have been waived as a result of this settlement agreement. Thank you. Thank you.